Back hand of the Mafia today with the arrest and indictment of a number of Mafia members along with several other men. All are charged with conspiracy and racketeering involving union loans. FBI agent Ian McLennan gave details to Alan Bull of WTAE in Pittsburgh. The arrests were made uh, early this morning and they were coordinated arrests with the arrests that were made in Detroit and New York. Uh, and uh, there, there was no, there were no incidents. Uh, the arrests were completely uh, made without uh, incident, and uh, apparently uh, the men were certainly not aware that they were about to be arrested. Now, this investigation has been going on for several years, Alan, and it's uh, it's been a very extensive investigation in uh, Western Pennsylvania, uh, New York City, and in the Detroit, Michigan area. How serious a blow do you think you have struck against the Cosa Nostra in these arrests? Well, any time that you arrest uh, 13 individuals in three states, uh, some of whom are the, uh, certainly included in the top echelon of the Cosa Nostra, you have uh, uh, dealt a blow to them by uh, publicly exposing them and by just the mere fact of making the arrest and uh, having them named in an indictment. It's, this is a very serious charge. Uh, uh, the, uh, the penalty, uh, the maximum penalty, uh, could be up to a five years imprisonment and a $10,000 fine. A former mafia figure has surfaced in New York City after turning informer for the government. ABC's Lou Chioffi has this exclusive report. We met in a New York hotel room. We cannot show you his face, but we can tell you his name, Pascal Calabresi, known to his friends as Patty. Until three years ago, he was a soldier in the mafia, a stick-up artist in the Buffalo, New York chapter. Today, he has a clean record, a new identity, and he lives with his family somewhere in the United States. Patty is in hiding because his testimony convicted two leaders of the Mafia and they put a price on his head. He broke the Mafia oath of secrecy because they tried to intimidate his wife. Is there such a thing as an oath of secrecy? That code doesn't exist anymore in my eyes. These older people are dropping down, the younger guys are getting in there and they don't have it. You, know? you just don't have that uh, secrecy about them. You know? Well, Patty, if there is no oath, what stops people from talking? Like I said, uh, the fear, I got the fear that people don't want to open up on them because they just, they just fear uh, what's going to happen to their families. Uh, Patty, uh, President Nixon has just kind of declared war on organized crime in the United States. Uh, are you aware of what he's been saying and yeah, proposing? Been, yeah, Lou, I've been following that pretty well. Do you think he's getting anywhere? Uh, with the money he's got to work with, uh, if he gets that, I think he has a chance of inf infiltrating a little bit, really. What do you mean infiltrating? Well, getting in. More guys to open up. They had a little, uh, I believe they had a little money problem. My own experience cost them quite a bit of money to keep me, you know, secluded somewhere. And they put my wife and kids uh, on a military base, heading away for eight, nine months. It cost money. And, uh, they would get enough of these guys, like myself, who are getting hurt and not really getting anything back. And they know they could turn to the federal government uh, for protection for their families. This is the main thing, well, their families, you know. Well, a lot of people have the impression that once you tell on the mafia and there's a contract on you, you never get away. There's a contract on you, isn't there? Yeah, there's a contract. How much? Who knows? Fifty, hundred thousand. I heard all kinds of rumors. So. That's why I look over my shoulder once in a while. Did you know what would happen to you? Oh, yeah. What? Just a matter of time, that's all. What do you mean? Oh, before they, before they find me, put it that way. Crime, like death and taxes, seems inevitable. Just as certain is the anti-crime effort. The president, in his message to Congress, takes specific aim at the organized underworld, be it called the Cosa Nostra, the Mafia, or the Syndicate. The White House message describes illegal gambling activities as stretching from the street corners of the ghettos to the housewives of the suburbs. The annual take or profit from illegal gambling is said to range from 20 to 50 billion dollars a year. The president is asking Congress for 61 million dollars to fight crime, with much of the money to be spent on new federal prosecutors and undercover agents. The president also likes the idea of the special strike forces as advanced first by Attorney General Ramsey Clark, under this idea, special teams of crime busters are located in major cities. The president also wants to establish a special state federal racket squad, with the first to be located in New York City 
where the lucrative crime franchise is said to be divided among five Cosa Nostra units. New laws are also requested, including one to make it a federal offense for local police or officials to take payoffs. Much of the responsibility still will fall on existing federal agencies, as detailed now by ABC's Sam Donaldson at the Justice Department. Historically, the government has tried to stamp out organized crime by prosecuting individual after individual on whatever charge it can gather evidence. But now, according to the Justice Department official directing the drive, the emphasis has been switched to attacking the very thing that keeps organized crime flourishing. While the headhunting has been uh, somewhat effective, uh, we found that it amounts to uh, a sort of retirement and promotion system. When we convict one of the top ones, uh, immediately you have some younger ones step into his place and we are going to emphasize an attack on the sources of revenue for the purpose of demolishing these families. Mr. Wilson, it seems to me that in this new push against organized crime, you're rather changing from the old concept of headhunting, looking for one individual after another. Yes, we are. Uh, and the reason is that... Uh, of ...revenue. Uh, that is the way we think we can break the rackets. Now, how are you going to do it? Well, that's uh, intensive investigatory work and many, many cases. But uh, it'll be an attack on the function in which they make money and the way they make their money rather than uh, the intensive investigation of a given individual. What about gambling in particular? Is there any new way that you can get at this problem? Well, no. Uh, but gambling uh, can be uh, demolished. Uh, when I was a state attorney general, uh, we did it, uh, and uh, it can be with intensive work and proper cases. There's also a note in this message about a new computerized intelligence system for interagency uh, information cross-exchange. How's that going to work? Well, that'll be a big improvement because uh, our present intelligence system uh, simply cannot accommodate the vast flow of information that we have. Uh, and uh, we need to uh, be able to get uh, a system that will make readily and quickly available uh, the tremendous uh, investigatory uh, intelligence sources available to the federal government. What do you do at the moment? Now, you don't have computers at the moment. No, we have a card system with uh, uh, individual indexers, and it's always behind. Thank you very much. Good. I, you know. Historically, the government has tried to stamp out organized crime by prosecuting individual after individual on whatever charge it can gather evidence. But now, according to the Justice Department official directing the effort, the emphasis has been switched to attacking the very thing that keeps organized crime flourishing. Want to do it again? <clears throat> Are you rolling? Historically, the government has tried to stamp out organized crime by prosecuting individual after individual on whatever charge it can gather evidence. But now, according to the Justice Department official directing the effort, the emphasis has been switched to attacking the... Well, I don't know what it's been switched to. Once again, are you ready? This is... All right, this is take three of the open. Historically, the fight to stamp out organized crime has been... All right, take four. Historically, the government has tried to stamp out organized crime by prosecuting individual after individual on whatever charge it can gather evidence. But now, according to the just... Mm -hmm. All right, now are we talking, calling this take five?
Historically, the government has tried to stamp out organized crime by prosecuting individual after individual on whatever charge it can gather evidence. But now, you're a mother. Uh, are you still rolling? All right, let's, let's try take six. Historically, the government has tried to stamp out organized crime by prosecuting individual after individual on whatever charge it can gather evidence. But now, according to the Justice Department official directing the effort, the emphasis has been switched to attacking the very thing that keeps organized crime flourishing. <laughs>